Hello there. We're here to clear up a possible meiosis disconnect. Say disconnect, Professor, this is all one big disconnect. Oh, no, it's not. But uh, uh, and nothing a little study and won't fix. But what am I talking about in particular? Well, I've represented meiosis two different ways. One way is like this. A big R and little r separated into different gametes and so what fraction of this parent's gametes will get a big R? One half. What fraction will get a little r? One half. And of course let's make sure we know what we're talking about here. That big R, little r represents a parent's what? A parent's body cell. Yes it does. And a parent's body cell. What does that little separator, those two arrows represent? The process we're talking about here, right? Meiosis. And what do these guys represent? Gametes. Yes, gametes. And so, okay, Professor, no big deal. What's the disconnect? Well, I've also represented meiosis like this. A 2N parent cell producing how many daughter cells? Four. One, two, three, four. And what have I put in each daughter cell? N, 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 because we said the chromosome number is what? It's cut in half. For us, that's be 46 and 23. Yes, it would. Well, which one's right? Will the real meiosis please step forward? Well, let's check this out by answering the last part of question 14 using a diagram of a cell with one pair of blah de blah de blah. All right, let's check this out. I'm going to put one very large oversized cell right here and it's going to be a cell of a big R little r individual that's what it says right there a big R little r individual and let's give this cell two exaggerated oversized chromosomes a homologous pair all right let's say this is the homologous pair that actually has the R alleles on it and uh, so Let's, uh, let's say there is a big R right there, a big R right there. And, uh, and so then I usually ask a student, I say, okay, if there's a big R right here, and these chromosomes are from a big R and little r individual, what's going to be right here? You know what I hear about 90% uh, of the time? I hear little r. And I go, eh, no, sorry. What have we learned about sister chromatids? They are what? They are identical. Well, this blue pen doesn't look like it wants to work for me. So I'll have to switch back to black, I guess. And so we have uh, big R, big R. You see, what's the deal, Professor? I thought there's only one big R. What are you talking about? Well, aren't these just uh, two copies of the same allele? Two copies of the same allele? Yes, they are. And uh, there is a process called chromosome duplication that actually makes two copies of the same allele. So those are actually two copies of the same allele. Where would the little r's be? They'd be right over here. Little r, little r. And so in both cases that would be two copies of the same allele as well, right? Two copies, two copies of the same allele. So we got two copies of the same allele here two copies of the same allele here. Well, let's say this very cell undergoes meiosis. Okay, We are going to represent all the middle stages of meiosis by the word meiosis and skip to the end of the program. How many daughter cells does meiosis produce? It's four, right? Let's represent four different cells. One, two, three, four. I uh, barely got them on there, didn't I? All right, how will these original chromatids over here and chromosomes be distributed by meiosis uh, among these daughter cells? Well, they'd be distributed evenly. What do we say happens during meiosis one? Homologous pairs are separated. What happens during meiosis two? Sister chromatids are separated. And so they end up in separate uh, daughter cells, separate uh, gametes. And so each one of these will get one of the original chromatids. There's one, two, three, four of them. 
And so how many of these daughter cells are going to get a big R? Well, there's two big R's to be had, right? Let's just make it simple and say these two right here get a big R. And obviously the other two then would get a little R. That's what meiosis would do. So what fraction of these daughter cells get a big R? Two out of four, which is one half big R, right? How many get a little R? Two out of four, which is one half little R. All right, and so uh, let's go back up to this drawing up here. Which one of these is the correct representation? Huh? Uh, actually, what? They're both right in a way, are they not? They both represent some aspect of, of uh, meiosis. Uh, let's uh, take this one over here. Are there four daughter cells? Yes, there are. Was the chromosome number cut in half? I don't know. How many chromosomes in this parent cell? A whopping two. How many chromosomes in each daughter cell represented? One. So was the chromosome number cut in half from two to one? Yes, it was. And so this represents exactly what's going on here. Uh, yeah, the chromosome number was cut in half. There's four daughter cells. Well, what about this diagram? It represents meiosis as being an allele separator and half the daughter cells in this example getting a big R and half the daughter cells getting a little r. Well, were uh, <coughs> these big R and little r alleles, were they separated? Did they all end up in different gametes? Yes, they did. Each one of these gametes has either a big R or a little r. Uh, what fraction get the big R? Got the big R? Uh, one half of them. One half got the little r. And so does this represent one aspect of what's going on in meiosis? Sure, alleles are separated, and uh, and half in this case, it's you know where we uh, have a heterozygous parent. It's easy to kind of see what's going on here. Uh, half half of the uh, daughter cells uh, get the dominant allele, half get the recessive. In this little summary diagram, that's what happens here. And so, what are both these diagrams? They are accurate diagrams that summarize some aspect of a much more complicated process. So I will use both of them from time to time. I use this one from sometimes this one, depending on what aspect of meiosis that I'm talking about at the time. But these both accurately summarize some aspect of meiosis, do they not? Is there a disconnect? Nah, there's no disconnect. Disconnect? Alright, that's it for now. Okay, bye-bye.